Hello, welcome back to Balance Strategy Live Noting. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you the breakdown of this node setup. So, um, so this is the setup. This is basically like a, kind of like a traveling um, something down this bubble wrap. Yeah, anything, anything goes. So this one actually quite simple. Um, you, I, I'm using Spreadjob add-on at the moment. So this part is Spreadjob bits. Um, there's also geometry nodes hiding. So if uh, yeah, if I refill, oh yeah, you think it's you think it's uh, quite complicated. It's actually really really simple. Um, I'll try to explain it um, backward. Uh, for now, I'll just go to Spreadshop first. So I have two different version of this. So basically, we get we, uh, we can see there's like a, this donut donut circles, right? I can replace the donut circle with uh, with a different line objects, but for now, just circle. I can make changes and it will still work. So it's basically a circle, and then I have two different version. This one with list slice actually. This one kind of works like. Um, it looks like dynamic paint. Um, it's kind of um, maybe in the future we, we can just use dynamic paint or something, something even better. For now, we're just gonna use this. So this is um, let me explain a circle that has been sampled to forty-eight frames. That's why this is. Kind of working and looping and from that circle i turn it into a bevel so there is this bevel that's why we have a donut two circle make a donut if you if you bevel them and then for the wrapping part i just Use some randomizations and noise display, so I get some movement. But in reality, we don't need all those. Um, what's really important here is the is this uh, the one that's hidden and become geometry nodes. Let me try to refill. So inside geometry nodes, we act we actually have couple of things here there are a couple of things that I hide the one that's make the donuts is basically instance torus that has been colorized with the this rainbow color okay so that bits is easy so what's happening before that is simply attribute proximity so there is something that's kind of responsible for the proximity is this uh, this object that's hidden okay gamma okay gamma is responsible gamma is currently hidden so there is a basically an icosphere that's traveling around the circle so this is gamma objects still from stretch off so this is an icosphere that's been traveling around and not not spreading but also giving some kind of influence okay so kind of like weight and the weight it's coming uh, into geometry nodes using distance. I, I mentioned about dynamic paint because you can actually use dynamic paint and create similar effects. But I, I want to give this example because this is kind of like uh, one of it's the basic idea. Once you have the weight and uh, proximity, you can kind of create this kind of effect very easily. Alright, so the circle itself 
is what makes the icosphere moving and while the icosphere the hidden icosphere moving we measure the, uh, the distance of that objects with our wrapping paper here okay I should uh, probably name things so it's easier to understand so so we compare the traveling icosphere with this bubble wrap so the geometry nodes is being applied to the bubble wrap and then we measure the distance using attribute proximity we can base it on point edges or faces this is actually really cool there's a video tutorial by Entagma kind of talking about these similar things the next thing after this is attribute color ramp we use attribute color ramp because we want to clamp the the weighting so um, so this is what I did I clamp it but in this case I'm putting the result as call which is interesting maybe this should be distance as well or oh, actually no well anyway I multiply the distance uh, don't worry about this maybe I don't need this guy maybe I can just jump yeah that's interesting we have the inverted color ramp here after I multiply the distance you can use this to control the size of spreading or the infection okay I think yeah I can make it smaller by changing this number so the effect still working uh, what's really cool about this setup is I, we can make it we can have two different variations the first one is using the the weighting to distribute some new uh, some new points I'm using Poisson these distributions but I can choose a different one but this is one example point distribution and then the point scale is using the distance once again so the same attribute coming from this attribute proximity so this guy is really powerful you can compare any points with any points in this case we are of course again comparing the icosphere that's moving along path with the bubble wrap okay the plastic bag so we with that distance weighting value we can spread some points and then scale etc this is a torus donuts that's get instant that's why it looks kind of cool and then here I'm using attribute fill just to fill it with a color that's that's over here so this is the instance or actually rather um, the result of this is like three different materials and I'm using index number two that's why it's using material number four so I put it here all right so that's uh, one explanation there is number two this one is the glowing bubbles okay like that. glowing bubble similar things except in this case I didn't distribute the points all I did was simply using multiplier for the distance so I have I have a value and then I scale and instance a cube that has been subdivided so this is a cube that's become a sphere the difference of this is that if I displace this guy we can still see the smaller bubbles alright so this is uh, this might be interesting for certain effect 
So there are all these smaller bubbles that's kind of accumulate 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 the, the weight. But they're just like zeroed out, so they're kind of hidden. Only if you kind of like stay in the same place for a long time, it's kind of growing. It's become this big bubble. Okay. So that's really what it is. If I switch back the other effect. So you can see this one is kind of accumulative. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, so this is basically what it is. Um, it seems complicated, but no, it's actually quite simple. Um, just slightly. Um, it takes a bit of thinking, but uh, the idea is really simple. You you are compare you are comparing two different objects. The one that's hidden is this gamma. So we compare the gamma with with the wrapping bag here. Whatever there is something here underneath, it will give this kind of indicator. So they are really close together. And then so you can kind of create these bubbles based on the instance. Right, so this is a uh, very cool, I think. Um, I'm using Blender 2.93 Alpha. What I, I wish I can do next is to kind of making kind of the bubbles appear and then changing color using color ramp. At the moment, I'm not sure you can do that. Maybe you can using using vertex color. Somehow you can inject inject the color. So if we have like color ramp from blue to red, if the bubble is small, it's maybe blue color. If it's too big, it become red, kind of like alarming. So yeah, so this is the setup. At some point, maybe we can. We don't need use to use sphere chalk anymore. We can just use something inside geometry nodes, kind of like a cache. Uh, kind of some kind of methods that can cast some cert certain weight, similar to dynamic paint, and then make making make it kind of spreading over time. So that's the effects uh, for the future, kind of like a homework. Yeah, but for now we can we can simply play around with this. So you can change different change to different um, things like line or let me try using torus torus not see if this is still gonna work or not it might fail oh yeah it doesn't quite like the torus not but it's possible to just simply replace the circle with the torus and then you can have the effects working so this is the torus of course i need to make changes also to the bevel so this is what i'm trying to do torus node is like spiral over a donut. So this works. How about the other one? Okay. So this is the other effects. The torus node is dependent. This number is 100, so I have 100 samples. I need 100 samples, so the whole thing can work.
right, so this is the other example. Okay, um, there you go. Hopefully you find this interesting and useful. Hopefully my explanation is good enough for this. Um, the one that's really <coughs> responsible is uh, attribute proximity nodes inside geometry nodes and the instancing everything is just extra side effects. Alright, so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.